What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. Alright, this story's called, She Said, Get the Hell Out. This happened here or somewhere in the southeast parts of Asia. My best friend is a franchisee of a really, really popular coffee shop. You know, uh, the one with the green logo. Just a little background. My best friend is the youngest daughter of a successful group of companies, but she grew up in a simple neighborhood with her aunts because her dad wanted her to know what the life that he grew up in was like. We met each other at a local park and we became best friends. She stayed humble and simple all throughout the years that I've been friends with her. Even even when she went back to that luxurious life that her parents wanted her to have. We met when we were five, and now that we're 23, our bond is stronger than ever. Back to present. I always stayed at her shop almost every day because, duh, free coffee, unlimited too. So the baristas and the staff basically know me as friends, just as how they treat best friend like a friend. The mornings are always the busiest times, and whenever she and the staff are having a hard time, I help them out with simple chores like cleaning up the tables and what washing the plates and utensils. She and her staff are always grateful, and besides, it pleases me to help. One morning, it wasn't as busy as the usual rowdy mornings at the coffee shop, but there was still a line of maybe four or five customers, most of which are the regulars that know us by our faces, but not our names. I still chose to help out. My best friend was behind the counter organizing the pastries, and I was cleaning a table when I suddenly heard an entitled voice. Hey, clean this table up, will you? I turned to where the voice was coming from, and behold, a Karen sitting on my best friend's cushion chair like it's hers with her feet on the low table. I wanted to scream at her, kick her feet off, and mock her, but I can't have my best friend's reputation being tarnished, so I calmed myself down and smiled at her. While wiping the table with a cloth, I gently but loudly told her to wait a bit. When I came to where Karen is seated, I was all smiles. What can I- Took you long enough! Oh, uh, sorry about that. I was- Never mind. I clenched my jaw hard because of how she interrupted while I was talking. Biggest pet peeve. And with her sickening, sarcastic voice, she spoke again. Would you please be a sweetie and get my order for me? So I asked her what her order was. Caramel macchiato with no sugar and more ice. So I went to the counter and asked the barista if the macchiato was already done. He looked at me, confused, and told me that nobody ordered a macchiato. So I went back to Karen and told her that she hasn't ordered anything yet. Karen clicked her tongue and looked at me menacingly. Are you stupid? You're supposed to make the order! I almost wanted to swing at her face. Oh, uh, ma'am, I'm not authorized to put in any orders in the cashier because I don't work here, and you have to make the orders by the counter. Oh, really? You don't work here? Why were you cleaning the tables then? Where is your manager? I need to report the staff that is too lazy to take orders. But, ma'am, I don't work here. Oh, stop it with your lies. Where is the manager? Please calm down. The other customers might be disturbed. Oh, you're reprimanding me now? Don't you know that my husband is a supervisor of best friends group of companies? He is close to the father of the owner of this place. I can have you fired for disrespecting me. Just then, I hear the firm voice of my best friend. What seems to be the problem, ma'am? Karen's face lit up, thinking that she was the manager. Karen explains how rude I was with declining the favor that she asked of me, and that I was being lazy. After Karen's explanation, best friend put her hand on my back and told me to go to the counter for now, then asked me to tell the barista to prepare Karen's drink. Karen smiles and leans back on the chair the moment that best friend turned around, satisfied, not even reading the chilly atmosphere. Now, best friend is is nice. It's just that you should probably avoid being on her bad side. It's always scary when best friend is angry. What's funny though is that the regulars that were onlookers know how best friend gets angry. Right at that moment, they were all silent and probably feeling sorry for Karen already. I hear the barista notify best friend that Karen's drink is ready, albeit with a shaky voice. Best friend hands the drink to Karen and she had the gall to smirk at best friend and lecture her. Next time, choose your staff wisely. One of them is slacking. Who might you be talking about, ma'am? Karen looks to the side and nods at the counter where I was leaning on. Ma'am, you might have misunderstood. She doesn't work here. She's my best friend. She just helps a lot here. Are you kidding me? Managers bringing friends at their jobs now? Oh, I'm not the manager. Karen looks bewilderedly at her. The barista beside me was getting anxious because best friend was talking calmly to Karen. Too calm. What are you then? The owner. I smirked as I saw Karen flinch. 
She looked, wide-eyed, at best friend. By the way, ma'am, may I ask you what the name of your husband is? If your husband really is close to my father, don't you think I should have recognized you by now? I remember all the people that are close to my father, including their wives. So what is the name of this husband of yours? When Karen stays silent, best friend starts spitting fire. Please do yourself a favor and do not come back here. Because if you do, the moment that I see your face inside my shop, I will not hesitate on teaching you a lesson for humiliating my best friend. I can and will sue you for harassment. Wh what? She said, Get the hell out! Best friend gives her a really sweet and professional smile, and she gestures towards the door. Will you please kindly step off? Karen stomps out of the coffee shop and not even bothering to pay for her drink. Best friend knew that I would never do anything to stain her name, so she knew immediately that Karen was telling lies so that best friend would take her side. Not knowing that she was busted the moment that she started explaining her side to my best friend. Okay, that was a pretty good story, I'm not gonna lie. Usually when stories begin like that, oh, my best friend, she's like, you know, we've known each other our whole lives and, you know, we share the same poo cycle. It all always ends up being like, oh yeah, yeah, she turned out to be a horrible person and two-faced and a traitor and a liar and a cheater and, you know, she murdered my father. So, it's good that people have some integrity for a change in these stories. And you know what? Good on her for staying humble. This story with an anime episode style title is called, Do I Look Like I Care? Racist Karen on the Prowl. So a little info about me. Firstly, I have never worked in retail and don't have that ingrained sense of customer service. Second, unlike a lot of people I've seen on this subreddit, I do not suffer from anxiety or fear of confrontation. Third, I am a big man, very big, six foot three, 300 plus pounds. So for the story, it's a little long, but bear with me. Important characters. There's me, psychotic demon spawns hoppy Karen, store manager, police officer. I was working overnight for a distribution center for a very large online market, let's call them Zamazon. I was coming off a holiday shift when my mom called and asked me to take her and my aunt to the store to pick up some last minute supplies for their respective holiday dinners. I agreed since one, I was off the following night and two, my mom's cooking is divine. So we head to Walmart, they both grab carts and head off. Now, this was some years ago when the push to talk phones were really popular. This is very important. So as my mom and aunt are shopping, I go wander off to the electronics department because I was planning on getting a new laptop. As I'm browsing, my phone gives off the telltale PTT chirp. When I check, it's my mom. I chirp back and she says that she needs some help in the baked goods aisle. I tell her I'm on my way, turn on my heels and start that way. As I'm clearing the aisle I'm on, I hear a low, hey, excuse me, from the other end of the aisle. I ignore it as my mom has summoned me to my sacred son duty. I I get to my mom and she asks me to load up a couple of 20 pound bags of sugar. She has a bad back so heavy lifting is a common request when we go places. After fulfilling my task like the dutiful son that I am, I decide to check on my aunt to see if she needs any help. I find her a few aisles over at the sodas and being the human forklift that I am, I decide to load them up for her. After my familial obligations are done, I turn back to head for the electronics and my future PC. As I make it to the end of the aisle, a wild care Karen appears. Now, when I say Karen, I mean capital K-A-R-E-N, from the I want to speak to your manager haircut to the midnight bright neon green running shoes that have never seen more than a brisk power walk. As she comes just short of causing my voice to go from tenor to soprano, I take a quick step to the side, give a less than enthusiastic sorry, and start past because damn it, I want my laptop. This lady grabs my arm and says in a voice that immediately pisses me off, now that you're done screwing around in other departments, you need to help me. Now, this is before the advent of Octothorpe, I don't work here, lady, so I am absolutely confused. I'm tired, hungry, and really want to get my laptop. So being the aspiring butthole that I am, I look at her, pull free of her talons, and start to walk away. Oh, was this the wrong thing to do? She lets out a banshee howl, and starts a litany of curses that would make Quentin Tarantino say, that was rude. Now, this little harpy is cursing me and calling me a lazy n-word and telling me, look here, you lazy nectopod. You help those black benches but can't be bothered to help a white person? This is the problem with you people. You've forgotten your place. Now, by this point, I am absolutely shocked that this woman has the nerve to talk to a total stranger like this. 
when she says the line that clarifies everything. You should be fired. A sorry near catastrophism like yourself shouldn't even be working in this neighborhood. The least you can do is try not to be completely incompetent. Not that I can expect much from an uneducated stock monkey. Now, I'm trying to figure out just how in the hell this psychopath could possibly think I work here till I remember exactly what I'm wearing. Tan cargo pants, a blue t-shirt, and my traitorous blue vest with neon reflective accents. Now, if she had been civil about this, I could have simply explained that I don't work for Walmart and I was sorry for the confusion. However, she wasn't, so I wasn't. This crazy racist bench had followed me from electronics and had seen me help both my mom and my aunt. Then something she'd said that hadn't registered yet came forward in my mind like a psychotic honey badger. You help those two black benches? Oh, hell no. This screeching she-beast called my mom and aunt benches. It's about to go nuclear in this pitch. Now I need you to stop being so damn lazy and get your sorry ass back over to electronics and do your damn job. Now her tirade has begun to draw attention and faster than she can recover, I stick my finger just shy of her nose and cut her off. In my best deadpan, soulless beast from the ninth circle of hell tone, I ask, do I look like I care what you freaking need? She is stunned, almost silent, almost. She tried to recover. How dare you talk to a customer like that? You need to respect your betters. I care because I don't work here, you ignorant, racist, freaking cooter rag. My betters, I don't know who in the hell you think you are. But if you ever touch me or talk to me like that, I will make damn sure you never do it again. By this time, a manager and security, which in this neighborhood are actual police officers, make their way to us and oh boy does it go from nuclear to apocalyptic. Now as I said, I'm a big guy and as you can tell from her tirade, clearly not white. And I am shopping in a predominantly white part of my city since that's where my parents live. So as you might guess at first, things are not going too well for me. Big black man yelling and intimidating a petite white woman. I was almost taken away then and there. However, it's Karen who saved me. <laughs> she turns to the manager and says, I want him fired and I will be pressing charges. This is no way for an employee to treat a customer. The manager looks at me and immediately realizes that something isn't right. He asked Karen what exactly happened. She then goes on a fanciful tale. He rudely blew me off an electronics department to come over here and waste time helping his kind. And then when I told him that he needed to help me, he blew me off again. When I grabbed his arm to stop him from ignoring me, he assaulted me and hurt my hands. It was at this point I could see the expressions of the manager and both police officers shift from daggers of hate in my direction to confusion to grim misunderstanding. Now, this woman who had been following me for at least 15 minutes, staring hate at my back, could not have possibly missed the gigantic Zamazon logo on my back. But apparently her care and vision was in full effect. Sir, can you please explain this behavior? I came in to do some shopping with my mom and aunts and had gone over to electronics because I wanted the new computer. My mom called me over to help her out and I also helped out my aunt. Then as I was heading back to electronics, she nearly hit me in my soft bits before clawing at my arm and going on a rant. Now, the entire time I'm putting heavy emphasis on the words mom and aunt. All the while, I'm watching the gears in Karen's head turning. I swear, you could see when one of those gears slipped a rod. Her face goes from beet red and angrily smug to sheet white and shocked. Although I still don't think she realized that I was not an employee, she is starting to realize the relationship I share with the people she has insulted. She doesn't give up, however. He, uh, he still shouldn't be prioritizing family while he's on the clock, nor should he be browsing merchandise instead of assisting customers. Store manager says as calmly as possible, Ma'am, this man is not an employee of this store, and according to your own words, you have assaulted him as well as harassed him. Then why is he in uniform and carrying a radio. Are you that stupid or are you blind? Did you not see the giant Zamazon logo on my back the whole time you were following me? But, but, the radio. You mean my phone? No, your radio. The one you got the call on from the other employee. Other employee? 
That was my mom, you doofus. It's a push to talk phone, not a radio. Sir, would you like to press charges? You bet your ass I do. Now I'm looking Karen square in the face. Honestly, I would have let this go, but a racist, bigoted bench like you doesn't deserve any pity. After all, I'm too much of a lazy neogrammarian to be bothered to let it go. Karen was promptly cuffed and led away, crying like a toddler who's just found out Santa wasn't real. She was charged with assault and harassment. I was given the option to pursue it as a hate crime due to multiple witnesses who mentioned her racist statements, but I didn't think it was worth it. I was able to finish shopping with my family, and to make up for the inconvenience, the store manager opened a line and rang us up himself, and I'm pretty sure we got his employee discount, although no one brought it up. It's honestly disgusting how some people go that far out of their way to be so hateful and disgusting. <laughs> also, you gotta appreciate how this guy is. He obviously loves his mom and aunt very much. I don't know, I always find nice relationships with parents and their kids to be very sweet. <laughs> also, he handled the Karen with a lot more class and uh, restraint than I would have shown. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.